Hello and welcome to another compelling Canna Patient Resource Connection class. Today we're going to briefly discuss non-hazardous medicine making. And what that means is we will not be discussing anything that includes making um, like FICO uh, or things that have flashpoints over a certain temperature. These are things that most people can, uh, at least in legal states, legally make in their own home. Um, and if you're not, you can at least not worry about blowing up your house uh, making these. FICO is an entirely separate process, and I would definitely recommend sitting with somebody who is an expert at making it before you actually branch out and do it on your own. All right, so let's get into this. Today, we will be discussing multiple topics. First is going to be tinctures. Then we'll cover topicals, infusions, butters, and cooking oils. So let's jump right into tinctures. For tinctures, regardless of whether it's cannabis or not, you're going to use 2 to 3 grams of medicinal plant material per ounce of tincture solvent. There are multiple tincture solvents that you can use, including glycerin and alcohol. Um, but the general rule of thumb that we found in medicine making books uh, is 2 to 3 grams of medicinal plant material per ounce of tincture solvent. Um, of course, if you want the stronger, use more. If you want it weaker, use less. Uh, no, with glycerin, vegetable glycerin, um, you do need to refrigerate it as it cures in your uh, house, and it does take longer to cure than an alcohol-based tincture. You can soak these things as long as desired. The longer you soak them, the more plant material will be drawn into your um, to your tincture there and some people do soak them for weeks or even months it just really depends on what works for you uh, and your preferred methods some people really love the long soaks some people really don't also just to remember chlorophyll uh, because it is part of the cannabis plant material it will get into your tincture and it treats constipation the longer the soak the more chlorophyll is in your mixture so just keep that in mind if you're trying to treat GI issues or belly issues also know that vegetable glycerin is a very sweet solvent um, and for some people that can actually be too uh, too sweet and just on its own it has been known to upset people's bellies um, so for any type of uh, gastrointestinal issue I would definitely not recommend going with vegetable glycerin and using other forms of tincture. Alcohol, just know the higher the proof of the alcohol, the less water is in it and the less chance for spoilage or contamination. Um, however, with any tincture, look at the manufacturer's directions on the solvent bottle to know what the shelf life of the product is going to be. Never, ever, ever drink isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. Those tinctures should only be made for topical uses uh, and never, ever, ever for an ingested use. That will definitely mess your liver up. So topicals, getting into that. Um, topicals are one of my favorite things to make because they're easy and they can be as simple as an infused coconut oil or as complex as a mixture of butters, and lotions and, and different things like that. You can also tailor a topical to meet your specific needs. Um, so what that means is basically um, when you make a topical you're going to choose a base for it. Uh, it's either going to be a wax which is like a beeswax or a soy uh, based wax. A lot of people are very um, animal conscious these days they don't like to use the beeswax. Um, I do like to use the beeswax because I find it's a more natural product uh, and I react to soy, so I can't, I can't use it. Um, there are butters, uh, and there are tons of different types of butter, from cocoa butter to shea butter, kokum butter. Uh, shea and kokum are mentioned here because I use both of those butters in my topical uh, that was pictured in the previous slide. Shea is very pliable, and I like the fact that it doesn't harden uh, to where my fingers can't actually get the, the topical out of the container. Um, but I also like to use kokum butter because it, it's good for skin issues. And I have what's called mast cell activation syndrome uh, and several autoimmune disorders. So skin issues kind of go hand in hand with that. Research each of these things 
um, you know, whether it's cocoa butter, or shea butter, or, uh, mango butter, whatever it is that you are using, research because each butter, each wax, and each oil, uh, like avocado or coconut or olive, they all have different properties to them and they could all be used um, differently. They have different applications. There are times where you're going to want to use olive oil or avocado oil uh, or, you know, different waxes or even something. Um, like lanolin, which is um, a very thick, thick, thick type of, of base. Now, if you're trying to tailor this to your needs, what you're going to want to do is get to know your essential oils um, and non-cannabis related essential oils. There's, there's more than just cannabis out there. And most illnesses or most ailments have multiple natural substances that can be combined together or used to help relieve symptoms at, at best with those things. And you, you want to add those types of essential oils into your topicals. The one thing you want to make sure is that they're therapeutic grade and organic. So for example, clove, peppermint, and eucalyptus all have pain relieving properties. Though some of those you can't use around kids, so you need to watch. Um, some of these may upset seizures, some may not. Uh, if you are having uh, issues with circulation, yarrow tincture might be something that you add to your topical. Uh, or if you have skin issues, look into things like carrot seed, lemongrass, and lavender. All are good for skin. Um, but know that lavender can be a little bit uh, of an irritant, uh, like clove and peppermint. So uh, just make sure that you go easy on those. But tailor your topical to meet your specific needs. There's no reason you need to be using a topical made for someone else. So to make topicals, I use a double boiler method uh, on very low heat. The mixture should never, ever, ever get so hot that these oils bubble. You just want to lightly melt everything together. And once everything is melted, you blend it on high with an electric mix mixer for about seven minutes. And I immediately stick these things in my freezer. Otherwise, I find the oils in the everything separates out. So it helps to maintain a really good consistency if you just throw it in the freezer uh, but just note, don't put it in the same freezer that you've got frozen food. Otherwise, the hot is going to make the cold uh, defrost, and it will make your food in your freezer go bad, and you don't want to eat bad food. So let's get on to infusions. Infusions are usually just ground-up plant material uh, soaked in liquid or water or oil or, or something, right? Um, pictured, we have a crockpot cannabis um, coconut oil infusion that's everybody's in the process of making there and it's straining out uh, into that jar. Uh, know that tea is an infusion and hot infusions are actually the most common forms used with cannabis. Um, people make butters and uh, coconut oils and infused olive oils and uh, avocado oils for various things, whether they're cooking with them, using them topically, or just putting them into uh, capsules. Know that the only difference really between an infusion and a tincture is the concentration. Tinctures are a lot more concentrated. So here's the difference between cold and hot infusions. Um, basically, a hot infusion you make in the same manner you would as a tea. So, and that's about one gram of plant material for two ounces of liquid. Um, so you pour hot but not boiling liquid over the material, let it steep. Um, always use glass or stainless receptacle with a lid, and you can steep it for 30 minutes, but it also can be steeped for several hours just depending on the strength that you want it. Um, for instance, if you're making a hemp tea or a cannabis tea, uh, let that sucker steep. Now cold infusions, uh, one gram for every two ounces of solvent, whatever it is that you're using, uh, oils, liquids, whatever. Uh, use room temperature solvent and let it steep overnight at minimum. Some things like glycerin uh, require a lot longer time, so it just depends on your your solvent. So if you're making a cold solvent, it may take a very long time for this to steep together uh, and actually become an infusion. So just be mindful of that if that's what you're making. Uh, the difference is, though, the cold infusions will preserve most terpenes and it will preserve most of the acid forms of your cannabinoids versus the hot infusions. When you start adding heat into cannabinoids, especially those acid forms that are unstable, 
they tend to decarboxylate and um, you end up with different things. So it truly just depends on what you're looking for. When you're done steeping your infusion, strain it out. Um, Water-based infusions need to be used within 24 hours. Think teas. Uh, you want to drink those suckers down. Others you can store in dark glass bottles according to the solvage store storage instructions. Um, some, like vegetable glycerin, require refrigeration after they've been opened. Uh, others don't necessarily require refrigeration. It just depends on what you made your infusion with. Can of butter. Uh, and this is a, a very blurry picture of me uh, boiling cannabis and butter together on my stove in the water bath method. Uh, basically, you just take, um, it could be made with fresh, dried, or vapor poo cannabis. And if you if you use a flour vaporizer and save the what's left after you vaporize it, generally there's medicine or um, cannabinoid content still left in those. But it is going to taste horrible. So understand that whatever that, what we call vapor poo smells like is what your butter is going to smell like if you make it from that. However, it is an effective way to draw out the rest of that uh, cannabinoid content. So grind your cannabis, wrap it in cheesecloth for easy straining, and, and understand uh, that is, has been essential for us. Um, I have issues with my hands, and I can't you know, strain and press each individual thing and to get the butter out. And I found the cheesecloth with a um, potato ricer works fantastic. So for every ounce of cannabis, use about a quarter pound or one stick of butter. Don't decarb it if you plan on cooking with your butter or oil. Um, only decarb it if you just plan on putting it on bread to eat uh, and you don't want the acid forms of those uh, cannabinoids. So like I said, um, the heating, the decarbing, that is entirely up to you. But if you're cooking with it, I would suggest not decarbing because that process is generally going to happen when you cook with it. So use a gallon of water, bring it to a boil, um, wrap your, your ground cannabis in cheesecloth. It generally works best in one ounce sections. Um, and then what you do is you combine the boiling water, you throw the butter in and then you um, let the butter melt and you throw your cannabis in and you let it simmer on very low for about 45 minutes. Um, I know some will simmer it for four hours or even more, depending on the desired strength and what type of cut you have with your cannabis. If you're using seeds and stems uh, and all sorts of things like that, you probably want to uh, steep it a little more. So strain it all out after the time uh, and use a potato ricer to make sure you release all the oils. You're going to have a lot of oils still stuck in there uh, and you want to make sure you get all that, all of that out. And then what you do is you place your strained water butter mixture, because it's all going to be together, the, into the refrigerator. The butter is going to solidify and go to the top and it can be easily separated from the water. When it's solid, you just wipe it on all sides, take it out of the water, discard the water, uh, and then store it like you would regular butter. Add to foods as desired. Again, with the decarbing, if you're cooking with it, don't decarb it first. Uh, and butter made with vapor poo will taste like vapor poo. So just, just totally understand that. Now, a neat little trick um, that you can do with these little cheesecloth um, buttery uh, discards that you have is look up a recipe for uh, bang, B-H-A-N-G. It's an Indian drink uh, made with cannabis, and it's very similar to ta or chai. Cooking oils, um, basically just infused oils. You follow all these same directions for infusions and make the oil to the desired strength. Uh, they can be used in foods, topicals, and even as a standalone dilution. Um, you know, avocado oils, olive oils, coconut oils. Using this therapeutically, do not use hydrogenated or oils that are really bad for you. Uh, try to maintain the healthiest balance possible. Thank you very much for attending our class. If you have any questions whatsoever, please put them in the comments section. And check out our other classes like cannabinoids and terpenes, beginner therapeutic cannabis, 
uh, and our leadership series. Thank you very much.